guys, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about the Willy Wonka experience and all that that entails. Now, if you haven't been on Twitter, maybe you haven't heard about this. I don't know how it is outside of Twitter because that's the main place where I'm getting all the updates, all the artifacts <laughs> from that experience. So basically what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna read an article that's gonna give us the rundown of what the fuck is going on. And aside from that, I've also compiled a couple of videos that I found from quote unquote behind the scenes from an actor in all of this experience, as well as people who went to this Willy Wonka. You know when you say that something was an experience and it's kind of like a way of saying that things went awry or things were shitty, like when someone asked me how was the class and I was like, it was an experience, it's never good news. This was truly an experience. Let's just talk about it. Yikes. A Willy Wonka quote unquote immersive experience turned out to be a partially decorated warehouse. Some parents were so angry they called the police. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory is a magical colorful place with a chocolate river, edible flowers, and Oompa Loompas bustling about. But a Willy Wonka event in Glasgow, Scotland was billed as an immersive experience turned out to be less than stellar. In fact, when some ticket holders showed up with their kids, they called the police. Stuart Sinclair, a dad who drove two hours with his three kids and paid $44 a ticket for the event, told CBS News and Marie Green there wasn't even any chocolate. That was the worst part about it, he said. Now, I'm chuckling here and there, not because I enjoy people getting ripped off, but in the context, it is slightly funny that the worst part about something was that there wasn't chocolate. Though in this context, it is pretty serious that it's called Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and you're not even gonna have chocolate. We'll get into the chocolate and jelly beans. There's things to be said. He said event space was just a warehouse and they did a very, very poor job of decorating it. Photos that show lackluster decorations barely filling a giant warehouse have gone viral. It was all described as a massive immersive experience. Great idea for the kids. Chocolate fountains just sounded really, really good. A nice day for the children and the family, said Sinclair. And when we got there, as you can see by the pictures and stuff, it was just not that at all. There were four or five props, a few jelly beans for the kids, half a cup of lemonade, just was not what was promised whatsoever. So in light of the whole setup being described, let me show you a video or two. I'm not joking, I paid 45 a ticket for this. Small aspects of castle in the world, and I bet we have to pay for that food over there. Uh, these are like um, the photo bits there. What a waste of money! Spicy castle in the world. Oh, look, it's a chocolate river. I want the chocolate so delicious. <laughs> Would you like a photograph? Come on over to the table. Do you think you can eat one of these? Ready, stand next to Mr. Wonka. You don't think you can eat one? Do you think you can eat one? Yes, of course you can. Ready? One, two, three, four. Yay! 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 So as you can see, it's decrepit. 
It literally looks like something that they put together in 24 hours, if even that. Like the only thing that was partially impressive, quote unquote, was that they even had a bridge with the quote unquote chocolate river, which was basically just like two brown bins from the looks of it. Very depressing, very kind of dystopian. Like this is what I would imagine Walmart, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, but make it dystopian. But again, Walmart. A dystopian Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, I would like to see that. There's this whole conspiracy theory about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory that he's actually just like murdering children. Are we gonna address any of that? Anyway, Sinclair said his oldest children found it funny and laughed it off, but his four-year-old daughter, who was dressed as Willy Wonka for the occasion, was really disappointed. She was telling all her teachers beforehand how she was going to meet Willy Wonka and it didn't really pan out like that, he said. He said it only took five minutes to get through the experience. The actors, however, were professional, he said. So this is the part where I am pissed off because disappointment in children is one of the worst fucking things. And we know I cover grim things on this channel, but disappointment in children is one of the worst fucking things. And I think I say that as someone who is forever disappointed since birth, but I remember the few times when I was really, you know, like when you're so disappointed, you feel like you were punched in the gut. I remember the few times that happened to me when I was a kid and it was fucking horrific. <laughs> like I remember. Yeah, so this is editing me chiming in. I don't know why I told this story in such a long winded way, but frankly, I was bored listening to it. So I'm just gonna cut that basically. But what had happened was that when I was a kid for one Christmas, I think I was like 10, I wanted a microscope. I got the microscope and the microscope was broken. The fucking rage my family had when I tried to use my microscope and there was a part of it that broke so it didn't effectively work. The rage they had because disappointed children are so heartbreaking. I hung on to that. Uh, I don't know if it's just my like mini trauma speaking, but yeah, it's fucked up when kids get that shot down. I'm pissed about that for these kids. It takes a lot to disappoint children in a way. So I also feel like it's even worse because overall, I feel like children are a little bit less pessimistic than adults until a certain age, then you might get into the emo era and that's a hard time. But it's so sad to be so excited to tell all your teachers, your friends, whatever. And then you end up in this shitty warehouse for $44 a head, like. In a now deleted social media post, House of Illuminati, which ran the event said, we fully apologize for what happened and will be giving full refunds to each and every person that purchased tickets. Sinclair said he has not yet gotten a refund. The actor who played Willy Wonka said it was not what he was expecting either and that he was unsure if he and the other actors would be paid. It was very disappointing to see how many people turned up at this event and found basically me dressed up as Willy Wonka in a half abandoned warehouse, Paul Connell told BBC Radio's Good Morning Scotland on Wednesday. So then they actually quote something that he's said in a TikTok. So I'm just gonna show you the TikTok so you can actually see and hear him say all of this stuff. Hello everyone, my name is Paul Connell and I was one of the actors employed to play Willy Wonka at the Wonka's Chocolate Experience fiasco that happened uh, in Glasgow this weekend. Um, I'm going to be poking a little bit of fun at the event, but I wanted to say before I start that I feel for anyone who bought tickets to this event, um, people who are expecting a magical chocolate experience uh, and got me in a top hat in a dirty warehouse in Glasgow. Um, people who wanted Timothy Chalamet and got Timothy Charlatan. Um, but I am going to tell kind of my side of it as an actor who was employed at this event. So the first red flag for me was when I was cast as Willy Wonka. Um, anyone who looks at me and thinks Willy Wonka and not Umpa Lumpa is out of their mind. I give off major Umpa Lumpa energy. Um, but not like a good Umpa Lumpa, not like one of the, like, like one that's at the back during the dance numbers, like falling over, like your aunt at a line dancing class on holiday. Um, but I got cast as the part on the Thursday, um, and was told that I needed to learn the script for the Friday. So I said, no problem, send it over. The script was 15 pages monologue pretty much of ai generated gibberish um which i will read some for you if you want in fact no i don't even need to read it because i lent it all and it was 
it was mad. I've learned all of it. That's all in there. That's in my brain. Um, so I'll give you one of the lines from the script. Uh, I'm not going to do the Willy Wonka voice because I think I've embarrassed myself enough uh, over the last few days. Um, but one of my favorite lines was, there is a man who lives here. His name is not known. So we call him the unknown. The unknown is an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls. What? <laughs> what? What is an evil chocolate maker for a start? Is it? A, does he make evil chocolate, or is he an evil man who makes chocolate? And what do you mean he lives in the walls? <laughs> so I had to perform that line with uh, with with gusto and 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 validity, um, and that was that was a challenge as as an actor. We were told on the uh, experience to hand out a jelly bean, one jelly bean uh, per child, um, and a quarter of a cup of Tesco's own brand lemonade. That was what the children got. No, no chocolate. There was no chocolate to be had at this chocolate factory, which I really think they missed a trick because if there's ever a an event to sell chocolate, um, I'd say it was this one. But no, they went with um, a single jelly bean and a, and a quarter of a glass of lemonade. And um, look, we, we turned up as a group of actors um, in the morning on the Saturday and saw what this was. Um, you could say it was a it was a world of imagination in that you had to imagine it was not a dirty old warehouse. <laughs> um, but we walked around this place and saw um, just health and safety nightmare for a start. Um, we saw there was no special effects that was promised. There was a thing that was supposed to be called the Twilight Tunnel, which was supposed to be a tunnel that um, like like a, a tunnel that everyone walked through that was like dark, but there's supposed to be stars like twinkling inside it and stuff like that, which I thought could have been quite cool. Um, what it was, was um, a bunch of checkered flags uh, pinned to a wall with some mirrors that were, that were found, I don't know where, maybe, probably the toilets. Um, so that was that was a, a letdown. Anyway, we all got together as actors and we were like, look, it is unlikely that we're going to get paid for this event. Um, however, they're going to put this event on with or without us. Um, and children are going to be coming through. Let's let's just stick around. Let's do our best to make sure that the children have some kind of um experience and um and all the all the actors who worked on it were you know are very very nice um lovely people so we stuck around we um did our best with with what we had which was which was very little um repeatedly as well like the script um just to, to backtrack the script had a moment where i was supposed to um suck up the unknown with a giant uh, vacuum cleaner. And I asked about that, and the people uh, running the event were like, we we don't know what to do with that. Just, just improvise that. I can't, I can't improvise a vacuum cleaner. I, I either have, you either have a vacuum cleaner or you don't have a vacuum cleaner. That's the two rules of, of having a vacuum cleaner. And we didn't have a vacuum cleaner. So I uh, made the creative decision to, to cut that right out of the script. So I was, I was told that I would, um, Every 45 minutes, we'd get a 15 minute break. Um, that that didn't happen. I, I was playing Willy Wonka for, for nearly four hours straight. Uh, it got to the point where I didn't know where I ended and Wonka began. Like we started to become one. Uh, I was just now just a crazy man in a old warehouse. Uh, I sat in my car, to be honest, and just stared into the void for a little while. Uh, and then when I came back in, 
that's when things had got a little bit out of control. Um, rightfully so, people were furious. They were shouting. There was people filming things on their phone. Uh, there was there was things being broken, things being stolen. Apparently, um, I I just walked into this after my lunch. Um, and was was told to hide, <laughs> which I was like, what has happened? Uh, so I was interviewed on the news um, yesterday, which I was more than happy to do because I thought, well, this will be an opportunity for me to kind of stick up for the group of actors who were also scammed by this event. Uh, in the interview, I talked about how we turned up, we'd, we'd worked out that we're probably not going to get paid for this event, but we'll, we'll, we'll stick around anyway um, because we know that they're going to put it on without us. Kids are coming through. Let's at least try and make something of a nice experience for the, the children and families who are coming through. Then I said on the interview, I, I feel like an idiot, to be honest. Um, I feel like I've, I've kind of been taking the mick out of. Uh, message all the actors was like, don't worry, I've, I've defended us on the news. Uh, the, the news edited that interview, and what happened was, um, last night at six o'clock, was the guy at the studio saying, okay, now let's speak to Paul Connell, one of the actors who was at the event. It cuts to me going, I feel like an idiot, to be honest, and back to the studio. So that was good. Um, I, I would like to finish this video by saying that I hope that the people who went there did get something out of it, um, other than one jelly bean and a quarter gla glass of uh, lemonade. Um, and I, I really hope that, that everyone gets the, the refunds that they deserve. Um, it was it was an absolute mess. Um, and the fact that I was a part of it uh, is is one of the most embarrassing things that's ever happened to me. And anyone who knows me would know <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of uh, embarrassing stuff happen to me. All right, guys. Uh, thank you very much. I'll I'll be around. Maybe if I get desperate, you'll probably see me in a warehouse um, uh, in, in a production of Alice in Wonderville where I'm playing the, the mad the hat wearer uh, and I'll be handing out half a biscuit and a quarter of a cup of tea to all the kids for the tea party. Thank you very much, guys. See you next time. Glasgow City Council's Trading Standard Department received one complaint about the event, according to BBC News. CBS News has reached out to the House of Illuminati as well as Box Hub, which provided the event space but was not responsible for the experience, for comment, and is awaiting a response. So I'm filming this Thursday about 24 hours before I post on Fridays. So if there's any later update, I'll try to add it in. But if not, make sure to check the pinned comment if there's like a last minute thing I need to add. Man, I just had a feeling, so I apologize. I just woke up, but it appears that the only character that's likable aside from the girl with the green hair in this whole Willy Wonka story, um, the Willy Wonka man actor, supposedly is fucking creepy. There is this account that I'm gonna put into the video now that he apparently was dating his drama student when she was 16 and he was the drama teacher, if I understand correctly. <sighs> Man, I'll show you what was said and you can make up your own mind. This shit honestly continues to get worse and worse. Additional update, so you know that picture uh, of the woman with the green hair that's gone viral, the Oompa Loompa Queen? Basically, she has also posted a TikTok, so I'm going to put that in here where she shares a little bit of her experience, um, especially the aftermath. So basically, I am the girl from the Wonka event. Um, 
I never wanted this to go as big as it was. I'm actually a very private person. I very private. I don't even really use social media. As you can see on my Twitter and on this is the first time I've actually posting um on. But I feel like I need to have my say of what's went on because I think I've got every right to right, since I've became a global anyway. <laughs> I do see the humour in it. It is really funny. Um, um, my friends and my family do are we all are laughing about it. I laugh with the other actors about it, about how bizarre this actually has went. Um, I don't even look like the picture. Um, at all. Um, getting called a fifty year old meth head is not great. Um, but yeah, the whole thing was bizarre. Um, the whole time I was actually. I think by that point actually everyone walked off set but then I felt bad for the kids so all I tried to do was try and uplift everyone's spirits and just have a bit of fun with the kids and I think some of the people at the event could vouch for me for that but I um the comments are savage very very savage and not very nice I think people need to learn to be a wee bit more kind and realize that people are just human beings and I'm just a normal person 30 year old woman from Glasgow um, who did a job that is the worst job, acting job I've ever done in my life. I love my job. Um, I really do. I do other stuff. Um, <laughs> it's just the whole thing's mental, to be honest with you. Um, but I, um, yeah, I just don't know what else to really say. I'm just speechless. I've not had my phone on for two days. Cause this has just been too much. Um, I do see the funny side of it. Um, don't know what else to say. This is just mental. I find all of this ridiculous. I remember reading online as well. I'll put a screenshot if I find it, if I didn't effectively imagine it, but I think that they used AI to make the ad, like their picture of like what the area, like the warehouse was supposedly gonna look like. Apparently it was AI generated and I have to see if that's actually true, but that was circulating as well. So this is another thing we can add to our list of why AI is fucking shit up. Because surely, obviously, if people saw the picture of a warehouse, do you think they would bring their children there and pay 40 plus dollars? Absolutely not. So. Another thing we need to be careful with, with AI. I find this kind of surreal and there is somewhat of an irony that a Willy Wonka would experience turns out to be like too good to be true and none of this is actually real. And I feel like a lot of themes from Willy Wonka are coming out in this grim fucking reality. I do hope that everyone gets a refund, honestly. And if anything, hopefully this gives people a good idea, people who can run major events, to actually do something like this. Because it does sound cool. I would go to it if it weren't too far and if I didn't have to interact with too many people. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always. And I'll catch you guys next time.